In a short time, I'm going to ask you to put your face up against that face piece and look in this box while I ask you to solve some multiplication problems in your head. The problems will be relatively uh, simple. They'll give, be given to you verbally, and I will ask you to give me the answer verbally back. Give me only the answer. Once you have given me the answer, dismiss the problem from your mind, and we'll go on to a next one. Many psychologists have begun to take Dr. Hesse's experiments with the pupils of the eye further. They were fascinated by the idea that there might be other forces inside the mind that people themselves weren't aware of. One of them was a young psychologist studying in America called Daniel Kahneman. His fascination with the complexity of the mind had come from a moment of terror when he was a child living in Nazi-occupied France during the Second World War. One day he had been stopped by an SS officer. Kahneman was a Jew and the SS was in charge of sending people to the death camps. He was convinced that he was about to be sent away to be killed. But the SS man picked him up, kissed him, and showed him pictures of his own son in Germany. Kahneman decided that the human mind was very strange and full of contradictory impulses. Seventeen times nineteen. Now, he, along with other psychologists inspired by Dr. Hess, studied the pupils in people's eyes as they gave them all kinds of problems to solve while distracting them with music and noise. Two hundred and twenty-three. They were trying to probe further into the human brain to see how it responded to the world outside in ways that the individual wasn't aware of. But as Kahneman and the others watched the individuals in their laboratories, isolated from the society outside, they were led down a very strange path. That in the age when the individual self was going to become the central focus from politics through to consumerism, the scientists were going to come to the conclusion that maybe the conscious self wasn't fully in control of what humans did. 35 years later, Kahneman was going to be given the Nobel Prize for a theory that began with his work in the 1960s. He would come to believe that what we think of as the self is really just a small part of something else hidden inside our brains. A much larger part of the brain that actually experiences the world outside. But that experience makes no sense. It is just an ongoing chaotic rush of biochemical data that flashes up and fades away. And what humans think of as their self is actually an accessory that tries to make sense of this chaotic mass of incoming data. But to do that, it has to simplify and turn that data into stories that are sometimes so simplified that they bear little relationship to the reality outside. gives people the feeling that they are in control, but that is just a comforting illusion. Kahneman's theory was going to have a far-reaching influence beyond psychology, because the implication of what he was saying was that you could never change people's behaviour by appealing to them rationally. And in a strange way, Kahneman was saying the same thing as the left-wing revolutionaries. Human beings did live in a simplified dream world. But what he was saying was that there was nothing you could do about that. And in an age of individualism, when you could no longer order people about, the only solution was to keep them in that dream world and to make sure the dream world was safe and happy. The idea of appealing to them rationally changing the world was pointless.